of Anger Brothers reporting from Ottawa with some good news. Canada's capital is really, really cool. Let's be honest, Ottawa is the underdog city of Canada. Even though it's the capital, lately it's been outshined by its neighbors, Toronto and Montreal. But now, things are changing. Half the population is under 35 and employment is high, which combines to make a young, prosperous city with an appetite for good food, drinks and culture. Ottawa's story begins back in the day when the British built the Rideau Canal to link the St. Lawrence River with Lake Ontario to protect this vital inland waterway from American invasion. Hello. Don't mind me, I'm just practicing my French pronunciation under a little umbrella. <laughs> the British brought in thousands of Irish and Scottish workers to complete the 202 kilometer long canal, which is the oldest continuously functioning canal in North America and a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Ottawa was later chosen as capital because literally right on the border of French speaking Quebec and the rest of English speaking Canada. That is Ontario. Et voici Quebec. It's nice. Hey, c'est bon. C'est très bon. Ah. Well, that's Parliament, and it kind of looks like a combination of Notre Dame and Big Ben, which I think explains a lot about Canada. That was deep. <laughs> and very simplistic. <laughs> I know. <laughs> While the ruling classes lived up on Parliament Hill, the canal workers lived in Byward Market, a rough-and-tumble neighborhood where the pastimes of the day were drinking, gambling, and prostitution. Oh, the good old days. Nowadays, it's the cultural hub of the revitalized downtown, where top-notch restaurants breathe new life into the historic buildings that surround the daily market. So we met up with Tracy from Sabon Food Tours and took a stroll through Byward Market. Now the reason food's so damn good here is because there's 1,200 farms within the city limits, more than Canada's other major cities combined, which means farm to table is nothing new. Local food is huge here and the green symbol of Savor Ottawa ensures that what you're eating is grown locally. So we dropped in on Roshan's Family Market who've been selling their homegrown produce for three generations and are still the choice supplier for local chefs. I think they want the best quality for what they're giving to their customers and it supports the market and I know for a fact that if you go to a restaurant in the market you really appreciate seeing on the menu that it's local and fresh. Byward Market has tons of stalls and stores, and each one adds a little something different to the recipe. Wow. <laughs> oh yeah. We started with the House of Cheese. So we're at the House of Cheese on this block alone. There's a thousand types of cheese, and there's half of them in this store, which means Marco is a happy traveler right now. Mark's go-to joke is always, my Achilles heel is goat cheese. It's not a joke. I think, I think you're in for some trouble here, bro. As you can see, we have about 500 different types of cheese in store. In the past, we used to import a lot more cheeses, but as trends change, people want to support local, more so, so we've got more local. Right next door is Savlov's Meat Market, where we sampled a rich and creamy terrine of local pâté. And it's not just Canadian food either. The covered market sells cuisine from around the world. Mexican, Chinese, and Middle Eastern. And just down the street, the Bottega Italiana sells all the good products from the old country. Down the street is the Grand, once upon a time a notorious by the hour hotel, today a first class pizza joint. So we sat down with the owner and asked him how Ottawa's food scene has evolved. In the last five years has changed a lot. In the last ten years, it's, it's, we've had great change. There's uh, lots of new restaurants have come up. The neighborhoods and the restaurants have all started to develop together. So, you know, there used to be just a Byron Market, now there's, there's little pockets in Ottawa with cool neighborhoods and cool little restaurants. And, when it came to dinner, we had two great experiences. Innovative tapas style dishes at play. Bacon steak. And burgers and beers at the Black Tomato with local food blogger Don Chow. <laughs> After that, Don took us to sample Ottawa's favorite dessert, a pastry called a beaver tail. The biggest tradition with beaver tails is this. In the wintertime, there isn't a lot to do, but we have the longest skating rink in the world. What happens is you skate a couple hours in the canal, they have these on the ice. No the, way. So you, you finish the skating, you fuel up, you grab a beaver tail. That's the tradition. You gotta squeeze the lemon on, nice and hearty. Nice. nice. There you go, extra lemon. Oh, that's, that's sexy. <laughs> lemon <Trip and>, sugar? <laughs> What is this? I don't know what to think about this. Acidic, sweet, 
Animal tails. Supposedly really good. Oh yeah. There's a lot more to Ottawa than just downtown, so the next morning we hopped in a cab and headed west. Okay, so we just got to Hintonburg and Wellington West. These are the up and coming neighborhoods of Ottawa, about 15 minutes from downtown. Apparently they're full of cool stores and boutiques and great restaurants and bars, so let's go check it out. One of the first places we stumbled upon was Victoire, a hip boutique specializing in local crafts whose owner, Regine, told us why she loves Ottawa. Oh man, Ottawa has always been cool and people who live here know that, but I know that people outside of the city don't know that. You gotta talk to the right people or like people who live here um, and then you'll find like the cool stuff that's happening. But it is hard if you're coming from outside the city to find those things like where the cool bars are or like the fun dance parties, but people who live here know we have fun. So good. So we took her advice and met up with Brad from Brew Donkey Craft Beer Tours, who took us to his favorite nano brewery, Beyond the Pale, in Hintonburg. You always want a slice. <laughs> this one? It's cut off yeah. Thursday. Yeah, yeah, cut off Thursday. <laughs> Beyond the Pale's ambitions are not to dominate the market on a national, regional, or even city-wide level. Instead, they focus on serving their immediate neighborhood, with most of their beer sold in refillable growlers. The local movement that was farmers markets about four or five years ago in Ottawa created a local drive for people to get local produce. That's now translated into get your local beer. Get, don't, you know, you're not going to your local baker to get bread. That, that was something that changed everybody's going to their supermarket to get bread. Well nowadays people want to go to the local bakery to get bread and they similarly want to go to the local brewery to get beer. People want to support somebody that they can know makes that product. They are they're shaking the hand of the brewer. If you'd have been here yesterday, Shane would have been here having a beer with you. Nothing goes better with good food than good beer. So we had dinner at the Wellington Gastro Pub, a neighborhood favorite with artists and food, a select beer list, and a monthly vinyl record club where they match tasty tunes with delicious beers. After a few days of eating and drinking our way through the city, the next morning we crossed the Ottawa River to treat ourselves to a little bit of luxury. Well, it's been an indulgent week, but we're not done yet. We just crossed over the river to the Quebec side, and we're now at Nordic Spa. Nordic Spa is one of the largest spas. It is spas. the largest spa. It is. The largest. the largest. It's the largest spa in North America, and we are in for a treat. Ah! Well, this is officially the best way to start the day ever. Oh my god, I can't wait for this. So apparently it's going to go like this. We're going to have a first sauna treatment where they're going to beat us with sticks for half an hour. Nice off gas treatment. And then we're gonna go into the cold water pools and then down to the Kaleo treatment, which is like Dead Sea. Basically, salty Float. water where we float in our backs. And guys, this is like the most scenic spa I've ever seen, ever. So let's get in it. Nice, very nice. Soaking in the outdoor tubs at Nordique, we start to appreciate having visited Ottawa in autumn. The colors are beautiful, the beers are seasonal, and the harvest makes the food that much better. So we took the slow way back to town, passing through Gatineau Park to soak up some natural beauty before making one last stop at La Brasseur des Temps to try all 12 of their beers and eat some epic poutine. Well, that was our week in Ottawa. If you've been to Ottawa or you're from there, make sure you share your tips and advice in the comment box below so we can make a traveler community in there. All those things. And as always, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe for new videos every week, and share it with your friends. And don't forget, we just add Snapchat. So add us on Snapchat for daily updates. It's like daily vlog. Woo!